From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! Sting from San Francisco. I want to be absolutely clear with our people and the world, the United States does not torture. It's against our laws and it's against our values. I have not authorized it and I will not authorize it. President Bush speaking in 2006. Now the Obama administration's released secret memos describing brutal CIA interrogation techniques that were approved by the Bush administration. But President Obama says he will not prosecute any CIA operatives who carried out those techniques. We'll speak with attorney Scott Wharton. Then communication management units, two secretive prisons in Indiana and Illinois are designed to severely restrict prisoner communication with family members, the media, and the outside world. Who's is being held here and why. And murder charges are imminent against the former leader of an Oakland bakery and the killing of Oakland Post editor Chauncey Bailey. We'll speak with the executive editor of the Chauncey Bailey Project, a group of reporters who banded together to investigate the killing. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Obama administration's released four Bush administration memos that gave CIA interrogators the legal basis for torture at Guantanamo and other foreign jails. The techniques described include waterboarding, holding prisoners in small dark boxes, bashing their heads against walls, subjecting them to insects, forced nudity, shackling, and sleep deprivation. The memos also include extensive legal arguments as to why these tactics do not amount to torture under U.S. and international law. In an accompanying statement, President Obama said CIA interrogators would not be prosecuted for following the memo's guidelines. We'll have more on this story after headlines with Scott Horton. Another Guantanamo prisoner has come forward to back accounts of worsening torture since President Obama took office. In a letter to his attorney, Adnan Farhan Abdul Latif said, quote, I have seen death so many times. Everything is over. Life is going to hell in my situation. America, what has happened to you? A Yemeni national, Abdul Latif, has been imprisoned since 2001. A new study says the vast majority of identifiable Iraqi victims of U.S.-led airstrikes have been women and children. According to the group Iraq Body Count, Iraqi women and children amounted to 85 percent of victims of known gender or age. The study covered a sample of more than 60,000 deaths over a five-year period since the 2003 invasion. In other Iraq news, at least 16 people were killed in a suicide bombing on an Iraqi military base in Anbar province. Another 50 were wounded. President Obama visited Mexico Thursday for the first time since taking office, appearing with Mexican President Felipe Calderon. Obama vowed U.S. cooperation in cracking down on drug cartels along the U.S.-Mexico border. At a time when the Mexican government has so courageously taken on uh, the drug cartels that have plagued both sides of the borders. It is absolutely critical that the United States joins as a full partner in dealing with this issue, both uh, through initiatives like the Merida Initiative, but also on our side of the border in dealing with the flow of guns and cash south. Despite the talk of cooperation, Obama rejected Calderon's key demand to push for reimposing the congressional assault weapons ban. Calderon says violence has significantly increased since the ban expired in 2004. As Obama arrived in Mexico City, hundreds of people rallied outside the U.S. Embassy to call for humane immigration reform in the United States. Leading the protest was Elvira Arellano, who was deported to Mexico in August 2007, following a year of refuge inside a Chicago church. Arellano called on Obama to impose a moratorium on immigration raids. We are in solidarity with all those children who are living in fear of being deported together with their parents after raids. Raids continue to occur day after day at 2, 3 or 5 in the morning. There are raids, deportations and we're asking President Obama to sign an executive order to stop raids and deportations. President Obama heads to the island of Trinidad today for the Summit of America as he's expected to face calls to lift the U.S. embargo embargo on Cuba. Appearing alongside visiting Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Haitian President Rene Preval summed up the stance of most summit participants in calling for a lifting of the blockade.
nous formulons un souhait. Et ce souhait est chaque année. We have a wish, which is that of the United Nations. And that is that the embargo against Cuba be lifted so that they can take part in this important dialogue. Cuba is a friend of Haiti's. Cuba is not invited to the America summit. Speaking in Venezuela Thursday, Cuban President Raul Castro repeated his call for direct talks with the United States. In Bolivia, three foreign nationals were killed and two arrested in what the Bolivian government called a thwarted assassination plot on President Evo Morales. Bolivian officials said a shootout broke out after police tried to arrest the suspects at a hotel in Santa Cruz region. Russia has announced a formal end to military operations in Chechnya. On Thursday, the Russian government said it would remove the last of security restrictions that have been in place since its military invaded Chechnya 10 years ago. Russia will still maintain a force of some 20,000 troops and police officers. The Israeli government's rebuffing mid-U.S. talks for peace talks with Palestinians towards reaching a two-state settlement. On Thursday, the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, said Palestinians must recognize Israel as a Jewish state as a precondition for future talks. Palestinians have called the demand a non-starter because it would mean not just acknowledging but legitimizing Israel's takeover of their land and the expulsion of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians who used to live there. Netanyahu announced the demand after after meeting U.S. envoy George Mitchell. Mitchell said the U.S. will insist on pursuing a two-state solution. It is in the United States' national interest that there be a comprehensive peace settlement in the Middle East. It should include uh, settlement of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, with a two-state solution involving a Palestinian state living side by side alongside the Jewish state of Israel in peace uh, and hopefully stability and prosperity. And we're going to do all we can during the rest of this visit and uh, over the coming weeks and months uh, to move toward that objective. Israeli newspaper Yediot Aranot is reporting, meanwhile, the Bush, the Obama administration, is prepared to force the Israeli government to accept a two-state peace deal. An unidentified Jewish leader quoted White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel as saying, quote, in the next four years, there's going to be a permanent status arrangement between Israel and the Palestinians on the basis of two states for two peoples, and it doesn't matter to us at all who is prime minister. The Obama administration has yet to outline whether the two-state solution it favors would meet minimal Palestinian rights. Previous U.S.-backed proposals would have still left Israel in control of the large West Bank settlement blocks on Palestinian land. The Israeli government has informed the U.N. it will refuse to cooperate with an investigation into whether it committed war crimes during its three-week assault on the Gaza Strip. Earlier this year, the U.N. Human Rights Council named former international prosecutor Richard Goldstone to head the probe. Meanwhile, an Israeli airstrike destroyed a home in the Gaza Strip on Thursday. It was the first Israeli airstrike on Gaza in over a month. In other news from Gaza, journalists from around the world gathered in Gaza City to mark the first anniversary of the killing of Reuters cameraman Fadl Shana. The 24-year-old Shana died on April 16, 2008, after an Israeli tank shelled his vehicle that was clearly marked press. Shana's final piece of footage shows the tank firing a shell before his camera goes black. The attack also killed eight Palestinian youths aged between 12 and 20 years old. Reuters bureau chief Alistair MacDonald was among those to speak at Shana's memorial. The grief and anguish that greeted the killing of Fadl last April the 16th at the age of just 24 was a mark not only of the affection in which he was held by his family and friends, but of the reputation he enjoyed as an independent journalist determined, through his work with Reuters, to inform the wider world about life and the conflict here in the Gaza Strip. No member of the Israeli military has been prosecuted for the attack that killed Shana and the eight Palestinian youths.